moving into our final conversation for today. And you must excuse me if I seem a bit distracted because there's just a table full of chocolate in front of me. And uh, it is mahogany chocolate. It's artisan handmade chocolate uh, made in Punta Gorda right here in Belize. And I have with me Luis Chaco, who is uh, the man behind mahogany chocolates. Good morning. Good morning, Marlene. Thanks for having me uh, here in, in your morning show. Yes. Well, Luis, let's get started. So uh, this is a chocolate company based in Punta Gorda, right? right? Tell me how you first got started. So we started off in 20, uh, early 2016. Okay. Um, initially, we acquired the equipment perhaps earlier than that, earlier in the year. Yeah. But it didn't really kick off until um, 2017. Yeah. And we first started off with our retail outlet store in Mahogany Bay Village, San Pedro. Yeah. We have a retail store there, and we have a semi-kitchen there yeah. on the facility as well, and then one in, in Belize City. Mm -hmm. And then late last year, in 2018, we consolidated these two facility, processing mm -hmm. facility in Punta Gorda. So we started operating in Punta Gorda, where we manufacture chocolate bars, chocolate products mm -hmm. from the beans. From beans grown in Belize. From grown beans grown. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So we are a craft chocolate maker. Yeah. And uh, we pr primarily we produce chocolate bars, and you can see here we yeah. have two of our brands: Belizean brand and our Brockton brand. Mm. But in addition to that, we also produce semi-finished product. We have our cocoa butter, uh, cocoa powder and cacao yeah. nibs and even cacao beans yeah. we package and, and distribute. Now, the cacao industry in Toledo has always been an important one. And I think over the years, we've seen more and more interest in, in the cacao that is produced in Belize. What used to happen before, and what still does happen, is that it's exported um, and then it's made into you know wonderful chocolates that are primarily available in the European market. Um, what you've done is taken the concept of the value-added product and made it here. Is it for, clearly, I mean, I don't know, is this for a local market or are you exporting it as is? Uh, it's created for both. As you can see, the quality of the product or packaging. Yeah, this is beautiful. Even the product in, on, in, in, in itself yeah. of, of high quality. Uh, it meets uh, international standards. But going back to your question, yes, Toledo is the, the birthplace of, yeah. of, of cacao for yeah. Belize. Um, we produce one of the best cacao in the world. Yeah. Um, it's very sought after. Yeah, uh, of, of course, yeah. Uh, we still export cacao beans. Yeah. Uh, just to put that in the context, we, at the moment, we're producing approximately 110 metric tons of cacao. Okay. Of course, it's minuscule compared to world production, yeah. or even in this part of the world. Um, but that's significant for us. Yeah. One, because we do not process all that. Yeah? Yeah. We are processing approximately uh, 20 to 25 percent of our cacao at the moment. Uh -huh. All nine chocolate makers in the country of Belize that I've counted so far yeah. you know, are processing this amount of cacao beans. So that's a significant um, step for us as a country to process our yeah. the product that we produce. Yeah. This is different compared to 10 years ago where, sorry, maybe even 10 years ago, yeah, we were, we were not producing anything. Yeah. Yeah. It was just so, but being sent out. Right. The most cacao of it is beans, exported. Yeah. Most of it is exported. Mm -hmm. And uh, now there's a shift, and you have more and more people um, being a part of the industry from the production, from the processing, yeah. for trading as, as the, the downstream. What's so special about the Belizean cacao? Why is it so sought after? So, yeah, that's, um, that's a very good point. One of the things is, first of all, we produce Trinitarian cacao in the country of Belize. Yeah? Uh, they are, and so there, yeah. there's three types of cacao. <laughs> yeah. There's three types of cacao. One, Criollo, two, Trinitario, and three, the Forastero. Of okay. course, there are others that are currently being developed in the Amazon yeah. at the moment. But those are three that we are, we are we commonly known. Yeah. And the Trinitario is a mixture of both the Forastero and the Criollo. Mm. And of course, there are theories that are saying that the Criollo is, 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 is one of the best cacao. Yeah. But, but really, in terms of flavor, does not have much flavor. Yeah. But there may be robust, there may be high productivity yeah. on, on those type of trees. There may be um, tolerance to pest or disease, similarly to, to forest stereotype. 
But what we have with Trinitarian is a, is a mixture of those. Mm -hmm. So we have extracted the, the characteristics of these two types of cacao into one Trinitario. But more importantly, though, is the flavor profile that is obtained from this Trinitario cacao yeah. that is important. Now, craft chocolate makers are more particular about the complex flavor profiles of, of, the, ca of the cacao beans that they buy. And so this is native to Belize? Or it was introduced? Uh, the Trinitario, yes, this is introduced to Belize. But yeah, we have. There's a, there's a study done by an archaeologist in, 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 in Belize some time ago, I think t t 15 to 20 years ago. Yeah. And uh, th th he has discovered that um, in one of the Mayan temple, in, well, not developed yet, um, mm -hmm. Ushibenka in the Toledo district, ah. he found a vase where um, the Mayans used to make cacao drink yeah. there. And this is where he believed cacao was originally domesticated in Belize. Yeah. Um, of course, there are other uh, theories, yeah. but generally the Mayans we were at the know, forefront yeah. Yeah, of uh, the cacao. Say, we Germans, do yeah. know that cacao was an important part of the Mayan culture, right, right. Um, and in fact, uh, many of the traditional recipes are still made today. Correct. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of livelihood, especially yeah. the Mayan communities in the everywhere throughout the country. Yeah. Um, cacao is sacred to them. They must have cacao at some point during the year. Yeah. and make their traditional cuckoo drink yeah. and, and consume it. Yeah. Um, now we're turning it into fine uh, products like our Brockdown and our Belizean. Yeah, yeah, I love the names, I really yeah. do. But Luis, uh, talk to me, you are a chocolate maker, right? right? right. What type of training does that take? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm only a novice yet <laughs> still. Um, I'm, I'm still learning uh, the trade. Yeah. But I, I, I developed this passion some five years ago. Mm -hmm. After working in the industry, in the cacao industry, yeah. for practically all my work life, yeah. all my work experience, you were and doing the traditional tours? Uh, well, no, it was mostly working with the growers. Okay. I was involved in, 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 the, in the association. Yeah. It was, was working with Green and Blacks. They were purchasing uh -huh. cacao beans from Belize. And uh, so it was more on that end, upstream, yeah. um, on the farming aspect. And, and six years ago, I started to develop this interest in, in chocolate making. And that's how I started. Yeah. And for, for me, it was to actually um, visit chocolate factories see how it's done, learn on my own basically. And um, in, in this industry, the craft chocolate making industry, most of the people learn by actually reading, mm -hmm. by, by sharing information with one another, yeah. and, and as a result, improve the craft. But uh, in, in other developed countries, for example, Switzerland, Belgium, where this is the capital of, of chocolate, um, you actually have to be certified. Yeah. Uh, but these are more chocolatiers. Yeah. They actually work with already produced uh, are processed cacao beans, such as covertures mm -hmm. or compound chocolate, and then they make them into f uh, fine, good quality products, like such as these, for example, Ooh. pralines. So that's uh, that is the work of a chocolatier. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so chocolate making, a chocolate maker, in my, my definition, yeah. really take it from the beans all the way to a, co a chocolate bar. So yeah. uh, when you want to go more into details and make this fine, products, bonbons or pralines, then yeah, that's a chocolatier work. I'm, I'm just so distracted. It's like I'm, I'm getting so hungry just talking about this. But so what happened, you're using locally sourced beans and you're going it, I, I want people to understand what we're doing. So you take locally sourced beans and you produce the chocolate that right. we see here. Right. Um, and, and that's a very, we, we see some um, chocolates made in Belize, but I mean, I think your packaging clearly uh, makes it very distinct as well. But you keep on calling it craft chocolate, and that's an important distinction to be made. Why, why how do you distinguish it? Because, you know, in Belize, we grow up chocolate is a, a, a Snickers bar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's basically craft chocolates. You take it from the beans and you produce using the, the basic equipment that exists on yeah. the market to, to make this product. Yeah. Um, 15 years ago, uh, the equipment to manufacture chocolate um, uh, they're, they're almost does not, did not exist. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, even today, for example, in the craft chocolate, we use stone grinder. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the stone grinder is currently used by a lot of, uh, a lot of people. Now it has evolved, basically. Yeah. But it first started with this uh, brand from, from India. And they use that to make uh, peanut butter mm. there, right? So, and of course, the Indians are advanced technologically, and they have invented that. And so we start to use that. Mm -hmm. We found out that it, it can work 
for, for chocolate. So a lot of the people in the craft shop industry started to use that, yeah. and pretty soon it spread across. So it, it requires, a, it, it is a lot of work. You yeah. take the beans, you roast it, um, you spend a lot of time, unlike large manufacturing, com manufacturing companies where they practically do not see the beans. They just empty it in, in tunnels, and, and it comes at the end of the <laughs> of, of 300 meters down the road yeah. uh, as a finished product. Yeah. Here, we actually take and spend time with the beans. Yeah. We, we take care of them. We hand pick um, them uh -huh. and to select them to go into our roasting. Yeah. Then from our roasting, we take them into our cracking and winnowing. Mm -hmm. And, and every step of the way, you're paying close attention to details. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you, you get just the right roasting profile. You want to make sure that you clean and winnow your nibs properly. And, and, and that's basically a craft on its own. And this is, this is uh, what the roasted bean would look like, the dried bean would look like. Right. As a chocolate maker, uh, one of the things that's much more important for me yeah. is the cacao beans. Yeah. I want to be able to have... For people who don't know, this is the fruit that right. you take off. Right. It, it's not quite ripe yet, right? It's, it's ready. It's, ripe it's ready. It's a just different yeah. um, And you get a little white bean, bean. Yeah. that you peel, and this is the seed that's left behind. Yeah. Correct, correct. You, yeah. you, you have an idea of the, of the <laughs> cacao, of the, how the process to take it yeah. to the beans, at least, Marilyn. Yeah. So, yes, it's it, the important for, for, for us as chocolate makers is the fermentation of the cacao beans. Yeah. To ensure, uh, we want to ensure that it's properly fermented and dried mm -hmm. and that uh, we have even uh, weight on, on each of the beans yeah. because you want to minimize less loss during the, the manufacturing process. And so for us, we work with the Belize cacao traders Mm. And the Belize cacao traders work with 150 growers, yeah. and uh, those 150 growers are subsistence um, farmers mm -hmm. that cultivate on average maybe one, uh, an acre and a half, two acres. Mm -hmm. Now we, because of our social sustainable program, we are increasing, we're helping them to increase their acreage. So yeah. these growers cultivate, their main task is to cultivate, and we go out there with our trucks, pick up the beans, pay them cash on, on, on at, at Right, on delivery or yeah. on pickup for their beans, transport them into our fermenting and drying facility mm -hmm. where the beans start the process of fermenting and drying. So two, more, two weeks later, then you have these fine yeah. fermented and dried beans. Now, yeah. I was told that, that or beans are particularly good for uh, dark chocolate or bitter, bitter chocolate, bitter sweet chocolate. Right, I mean, the, once you have high quality cacao beans, yeah. you know, you can practically make anything with it. Yeah. And, and, and the, 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 the the better route to take with that is to make chocolate products yeah. that you really truly represent the cacao beans. Yeah. Of course, there is the other route where you canvas it with cocoa butter and milk and sugar, sugar and then yeah. you, don't have, uh, rep you don't have the beans represented. There's no and as craft chocolate makers, this is exactly what we want to do. Yeah. However, you also have your local consumers yeah. who, have, who know chocolate in a different way yeah. and so still demand um, with some sugar and some um, milk. Ca milk and so forth, but you're using a high value product, yeah. a raw product into that product. Yeah. And, and that's one of the drive for us as mahogany chocolate to produce the Brockdown bar. Yeah. yeah. So the Brockdown bar is so the a bar, cho milk chocolate bar? It's a milk chocolate bar. It's a 50% a based cacao. Mm. And uh, so you have milk, you have sugar, but you but also have half of it is made out of chocolate. Of cacao, yeah, yes, cacao. of cacao, yeah. And then you also have um, almonds inside. Ooh. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand. So clearly, you are creating a product, and I see your, your milk chocolate here with different percentages. And this one is your fine chocolate. It's 72% dark. Right. So our, our first two, our two products first yeah. uh, will be the Brockdong and the Belizean Bar. Yeah. These are products that are out on the market at the moment. Yeah. Our Belizean is a 72% dark chocolate. Yeah. yeah. We truly want to represent the beans produced in Belize. Yeah. And then second product is our Brockdong. It's a 50% uh, cacao-based yeah. chocolate, milk chocolate. And that is more yeah. for a lot of local consumers who are still yet yeah. uh, want basically something sweet, but at the, at the end try to inch towards consuming fine flavored dark chocolate. Yeah. And so that Brockdong is, is, is truly a product for them. And we got to love the name, yeah. right? Right. And then we recently, um, we, uh, deve we, we developed five other flavors. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, and uh, those will be launched on, on the market very soon. Oh, and these so are flavored? Yes. So for example, with this one, this is our 57% 57 dark milk chocolate. Mm. So it has higher content in cocoa and um, 
but it's a milk chocolate. Uh -huh. Then we have our 60% like light dark chocolate. Okay. Yeah. So you know Belizean palettes, right? So clearly, w what do we like? We like light more than dark. Right, right. You're, 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 uh, well, I do not know well, but mm -hmm. clear all indication is that uh, the Belizean consumers prefer something with below 30%. Could you believe it? So, so, so we are really eating yeah, chocolate. Yeah, yeah. We we mm -hmm. consume a lot of of of, of chocolate uh, of chocolate that contains less than 30% of cocoa, mm. and and so it's it's more. I term it as a more of a candy. Yeah. Right, and it's not really chocolate. I must say though that in the last four years, I've seen some, uh, I've seen some shift yeah. in the consumption palette. More people are more uh, yeah. gravitated to dark chocolate. Yeah. Right, and that's very good for 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 the chocolate makers in in, yeah. in the Belize industry. And, but that's also important for the local growers because they produce such a good, a high quality product, and these chocolate makers take those exact same product, cacao beans, and manufacture it to find products like those. So it's, it's, it, it thrilled me. It's, uh, I'm, I'm happy yeah. that, um, that the local consumers now gravitating toward that. Do you think it's access? Because, I mean, we really did only have access to, like, um, candy bars um, and milk chocolate bars, but uh, I see more and more access to dark chocolate. I think a lot more people know. Um, like, I'm, I'm one who's been converted to more yeah. dark chocolate, yeah. but I also know that it's a bit, just a bit healthier for you rather right. than a, right. a, a milk chocolate right. or so, candy bar, I should right. say. Right. So there's so many factors. Uh, yeah. Access is one of them. Um, the, the, the access is one of them. Mm -hmm. Distribution is a major, major problem for a lot of these craft chocolate makers. Yeah. Um, education is, is also another critical um, factor yeah. um, why consumers are still have not, are not Belgian consumers, that is, yeah. still not gravitated to, to, to consuming local dark chocolate. The other thing is, is pricing seems to be a, a, a challenge for a lot of a lot of Belizeans because yeah. here we are taking this fine quality product, producing into chocolate bar, yeah. and and then you also have and it's um, handcraft. I mean, you have handcrafted right product, product yes, yeah. and then you also have and then you have still on the market uh, uh, chocolate products that are manufactured elsewhere using cocoa beans for using cocoa beans from Africa, for example, mm -hmm. where the price is at least 100% less than what the farmers are receiving here in Belize. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you compete with that? And you still have a lot of importers bringing this product. Yeah. And so uh, on, on that part, you, you want to think education will be critical to, to, to change that. Yeah. So what are your price? If you want this in the local market, what's the price point that we're looking at? Our product, Brock Dong, is available in the market and you can find our Brock Dong anywhere between $4 to $4.50 Belize mm -hmm. on the supermarket. We are now in 70 stores uh, in the country uh -huh. and, and very soon we'll be almost everywhere. So, uh -huh. and this is the first time that we're taking our product on the, on, the yeah. um, on the show like this and we want to be able to have consumers know and become aware of our product, how it's made. Yeah. And and then, of course, they can always follow us on our Facebook page or visit our website to find more information how it's made. And then we also, and then our Belizean. Sorry, Lockdown is on the market, On the market, right? yes. And then we have Belizean. Our Belizean, um, again, it's, it's on the market. How do you explain what this is? What is it so, like? So it's a, a 72 dark chocolate, right, with a lot of, of a fruity flavor. Mm. Yeah. When, I, when I want to get consumers to, to, to really understand about dark chocolate, I really want to, for them to savor dark chocolate. Yeah. You know, it's, you don't want to consume your dark chocolate, and, and this goes for any dark chocolate that you pick on the shelves. Take a small bite, mm -hmm. you know, savor it. Understand, the, uh, get the flavor profiles that the chocolate is providing you, yeah. you know. And eventually you will like that type of chocolate, yeah. you know. And, and of course, we all have different palettes. Um, no, one chocolate is good for me, may not be good for you. You may yeah. have a different flavor, uh, uh, flavor requirement. Yeah. And so uh, at, at the moment, it, it's, it's still undefined. What, yeah. we, what we do at, 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 at Mahogany Chocolate is mm -hmm. to want to make sure that our Belizean remains the same. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that we, and that's because we have a strict uh, policy and how we roast, yeah. and we want for it to be to remain the same, so that when one I person identifies the chocolate and feels gravitated to it and likes it, yeah. then they can always come back and have the same. So chocolate this bar. one is already on the market. Too. The, the Brockdong and the Belizean, they're both on the market and they can be found in the stores. What's um, the price point for this one? So th this will retail for twelve dollars Belize yeah. per yeah. 
for a, 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 a 90 gram chocolate bar. For a bar, oh, yeah. yeah. 90 gram chocolate bar. All right. But you're also exporting it, I would imagine, uh, or looking uh, for markets uh, to export. Uh, not as yet. We're not exporting as yet. Um, we want to make sure that we uh, capture the, the local market first. Yeah. And uh, so far, we're doing um, um, very well. Of course, there's more work to be done to, yeah. to penetrate and reach other, other market. And yeah. um, there are some districts that we have not, um, uh, we, we're not in yet. And so we want to be able to canvas the entire c the country, make sure that um, the local consumers have the opportunity to access these chocolate bars. Uh, these chocolate products, and then we look at the export. Of course, the export is the is, yeah. is the is the target. We want to make sure that um, these products do well in our local economy first, local yeah. country first, before they're exported. So, since you've had them in the supermarkets, how are they doing? Well, uh, uh, let's let's put it in perspective. In, in in December, when we first put our products out there, we had maybe let's say 300 um, bars sold for the month. By by February, it was it was up to almost 4,000 bars per month. Oh wow! So uh, so it, it is going, it yeah. is growing, and, uh, and and that's good for us, and that's yeah. good news for our growers too, because we will be able to continue to purchase more cacao beans from our growers. Yeah, yeah. 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 I see some other items here. Are these only available at your uh, processing plant? Right, or? right. So these are the two product bars. Four four other chocolate products will be launched very soon. Yeah. But in addition to that, we also make Cocoa butter. Mm -hmm. right? Now, cocoa butter um, is a mm -hmm. value-add product from the cacao beans, yeah. right? And uh, this is consumed by the pharmaceutical industry. This is con this is, is used by sorry, it's used by pharmaceutical industry. This is used also by um, um, pastry chefs. Yeah. They cacao butter is a good friend for them. Yeah. Uh, especially when they're making their pralines and bonbons, they would do mixture with it. Yeah. And uh, Craft chocolate makers also use cacao butter. Um, so, right, that's correct. Because you also want to work, you, you want when you produce your chocolate, yeah, you, you want to make sure that you, that you produce good chocolate and you want to make sure that you temper it well. Mm -hmm. And one of the ingredients to improve and enhance tempering yeah. or to create that shiny, more flowing chocolate yeah. would be the addition of butter. Yeah. yeah. So they do use um, cocoa butter. Yeah, so I think people just know co uh, cocoa butter for lotions and lotions, moisturizers, exactly, yes. which it could be used yeah. for, I'm sure. Of course, sure. absolutely. Yeah. That's that yeah. it's, it's used for that. But it's also yeah. used in chocolate production. In chocolate production and yeah. so forth, yeah. And, and so this is available. Yeah. Um, I'm proud to say that very soon, by the end of this month, we'll be making our first export of cocoa butter to Japan. Oh, wow. Right. And so this value-added product, cocoa butter, cacao nibs, and cacao powder, yeah. powder um, you also have the cacao, cacao powder. powder. Yeah, will be exported rather sooner than uh, some of these um, than finished the chocolate bar. product, product bars. Yes. Why is it easier to get the well, other byproducts well, rather than uh, the chocolate? Like, like I mentioned, our, our this, tar this this market will be for craft chocolate makers. Yeah. So you also have, and then like the craft chocolate maker um, cho chocolate industry is growing rapidly. Yeah. Um, for example, in, in the U.S., ten years ago there may be 20, 24, 25 craft chocolate maker. Now there are over almost 300 craft yeah. chocolate makers. So it's growing. Yeah. And access to natural cocoa butter yeah. uh, is a challenge for them. And so and that's uh, some, it's a market opportunity for us. Awesome. Yeah. And you didn't bring any cacao nibs because that's such well, a I, I, that's I have such cacao a nibs. Product. I have yeah. cacao nibs. Um, I, unfortunately, I our own, table. I made my own nibs just yeah, now, right? I, I noticed. I noticed. <laughs> unfortunately, our table is too small, but we yeah. want to highlight these products. Yes, but yeah. we, we also produce cacao nibs. As a matter of fact, cacao nibs, cacao powder, and cacao butter will be the first product to be exported. Right. Yeah. And cacao nibs is it's actually trending as one of like the superfoods, so it's very popular. Right, yeah. right. It's, it, it's a superfood. Uh, it's, um, it's an antioxidant, yeah. and a lot of, 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 of the people are consuming um, nibs. Yeah. I mean, every, everyone's almost consuming nibs now. It's, yeah. very hel it's, it's healthy for, for yeah. you also. And it's and chocolate flavor, but without the sweet. Yeah. Without the sweet, without yeah. the sugar. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's, it's raw like that. Yeah. And uh, people make it with their smoothie in the morning or mm -hmm. put it on, the, on top of their yogurt or just consume it as, as a snack. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, as you said, you are in 70 supermarkets already. If there's a supermarket who doesn't have your product, how do they get in touch? So, they can, um, we, we, we're always out there uh, promoting our chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. And for those that want to uh, carry our product, they can, they can contact us via, uh, via our website yeah. or they can or uh, contact us, us 
Yes, <laughs> on Joachim and Curzal. They can contact us via our, um, our website, yeah. our Facebook page, our social media page, uh -huh. and, um, and reach us at the 722-2222, or email us at info at mahoganychocolate.com. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then one of our sales representatives for myself will be re responding yeah. and we'll give them our, our price list, the product that we offer, yeah. and, and then we'll, we'll move on from there. So there yeah. you have it, Belize. When you see Brook down and Belizean on the shelves, it's uh, made in Belize, grown in, in Belize, Belize by processed Belize. Yeah. by a Belizean, um, and definitely worth the investment there. And I always do this, and I know people always say it's like asking your favorite child, but which is your favorite? For me, I prefer a dark chocolate, and uh, the Belizean, the Belizean, seventy-two percent is my my favorite dark chocolate. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is the Belizean this here. This is the Belizean right there. I'll take a quick sample yeah. at the end of the show, and uh, we definitely want to thank you for coming in and telling yeah. us a bit about uh, the product that you put out, and so people know when they see it that they know it's a all an authentically made Belizean product, and we can show our support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to go ahead and take that uh, final break, and when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up, so stay tuned.